The Prince of Transylvania, Vlad Tepes, is considered to be the main inspiration behind Bram Stoker's legendary novel. But though Vlad's ruthlessness and penchant for blood earned him the notoriety for being the man behind the monster, there was also a woman whose tale provided equal if not more influence to the myth. This lady in the castle story has been tainted by evil, haunted by unspeakable acts of punishment, and sensationalized psychotic behaviors. But how much of it was true? Welcome to Nutty History. Today, we are unraveling the creepy secrets of the Countess Dracula of Hungary and more than 600 of her victims. Or was she the victim of a devious plot? A Bastion of Blood it was a snowy day on December 29, 1610, when a garrison of Hungarian soldiers were ordered to storm the castle of Chete. Next to the villages of Trenchen and Kastice, the Chete castle wasn't an enemy territory. In fact, the castle was a residence of the niece of Stephen Bathory, the King of Poland, the Grand Duke of Lithuania, and the Prince of Transylvania. Stephen's brother was George IV Bathory, who resided in the family estate in Nirbator at Ecce Castle and owned a substantial amount of land in the Hungarian Empire. Her lineage was a big deal for Hungary. Also, the late owner of the Chete Castle was Ferenc Ladosti, also the son of a baron and a decorated war hero, despite being slightly lower ranked than his wife. Castle Chete was his gift to his wife Elizabeth Bathory, the subject of our video, who was also the reason why that garrison of guards was knocking on the castle door in the middle of a cold winter day. The villages around the castle were buzzing about the disappearance of peasant girls at an alarming rate in volume. Word on the streets was that all these women were seen entering the castle Chete, hoping to find work as maids and servants, but no one saw them ever coming out again. Trenchen's population was hardly a few thousand, and 600 women had disappeared. To say the matter was urgent would be a super understatement. In fact, some might say that the law had waited too long to take any action against Lady Elizabeth Bathory. The Lutheran Church had been investigating claims of punishment, maltreatment, and vanishings of villagers around the castle Chete since 1602. But the lives of mere peasants were not enough to draw King Matthias II's attention towards the scion of one of the most powerful families in the Hungarian Empire. However, things changed after reports of noble girls disappearing from Elizabeth's custody became a regular affair. Because unlike peasants, nobles, even of lower ranks, mattered. In 1610, King Matthias assigned Georgi Thurzo, Count Palatine of Hungary, who was also coincidentally Bathory's distant cousin, to investigate the claims. Thurzo took depositions from people living in the area surrounding her estate, including the testimony of more than 300 witnesses and survivors that led to the charge at her castle on December 29th. A Trail of Evil Based on these testimonies, Thurzo had concluded that 50-year-old Elizabeth Bathory had been punishing women in unspeakable ways since 1590. The reason behind such profiling was the accusation that Bathory was using the blood of these maidens to bathe so that she could preserve her youth. Would it work? Why not ask Brian Johnson? But let's get back to Bathory for now. She allegedly used hot substances on her victims to discipline them. Witnesses mentioned the use of sharp objects as well. Some of them were given a forced ice water challenge and then left in open grounds overnight with not a single cloth on their bodies to freeze outside in the cold. Some were given the contrasting treatment. She stripped them to have them covered in honey in broad daylight so the bugs could feast on their exposed skin. Others were chained up with cuffs so tight that their hands turned blue. I mean, this was evil on a different level. Some testify that scissors were her favorite toys to play with even though other sharp objects like needles, knives, and stakes were also used quite extensively for ill treatment and punishment purposes. But scissors were one tool she preferred to use with her own hands. Her other personal choice of weapon was a silk scarf that she used on them with the Turkish way. More on where she learned that later as this list of crimes against her is going to take a bit more. She also starved and parched her servants who had eventually become her prisoners to the point that she could make them eat extremely hot cakes that would harm the insides of their mouths. In his testimony, Count Georgi Thurzo claimed that he caught the dame red-handed in the process of doing harrowing acts to a servant when he stormed the castle. Elizabeth Bathory was arrested and imprisoned in her home while the committee rifled through her various crimes and made heads and tails of all that had transpired. 
Three females and a male servant were arrested and taken to a dungeon to be questioned for being accessories to the Lady of the Castle's crimes. All of them denied any involvement in the actual act of taking lives or punishing the poor souls, but confessed their part in helping to get rid of multiple victims' remains. There was also another person in the castle, if rumors were true, who was eliminated on sight by the guards for a bedding battery with black magic. With such a heinous litany of charges against the woman who had single-handedly ruled the Castle Chete for the last 32 years, this became the most high-profile case in Europe. Thurzo's men managed to make Bathory servants confess about at least 30 lives ended by Elizabeth Bathory, while the testimonies before arrest were made, but the body count was between 600 to 650. Thurzo compromised to present a charge sheet with an account of 80 lives ended by Bathory. The Trial of the Terminator for such a scandalous case, you would imagine a trial of epic proportions with lengthy courtroom dramas stretching over days and weeks would happen, if not months. But none of that happened. The Countess remained under house arrest in her castle and never even was asked to present herself or her defense in front of a judge, which most likely was King Matthias II or jury. It's believed that King Matthias wished her to be tried, but surprisingly, Thurzo was the one who asked for Elizabeth Bathory to be spared from the humiliation. The scandal itself was enough for Hungary's nemesis, the Ottomans, to create propaganda against the Hungarians and their religion. Thurzo pleaded that there was no need to give them more bait, and surprisingly, the king agreed. However, the four servants of Castle Chete, who had testified against Elizabeth, were tried instead, and without much deliberation over testimonies and evidence, they were sent to be put on stakes. And I'm not talking about porterhouses here. But that doesn't mean Elizabeth Bathory got off the hook clean on the technicality of being a member of a regal family and thus being above the law. She remained house arrested for the next four years with a very limited number of servants until she kicked the bucket. Now here's a question. Why wasn't she punished appropriately for her crimes despite so many testimonies and enough evidence? Why was the trial merely a formality? A mistrial of malignance? Well, here's the other side of the coin. None of the 300 testimonies that built up the case against the Countess swore about witnessing Elizabeth Bathory committing any of the crimes they accused her of. All of them testified that the information was secondhand. The four servants who were arrested and gave damning witness accounts against the Countess agreed to do so after excruciating amounts of punishment. Back in those days, punishment before interrogation was a standard practice, but it doesn't make those testimonies any less forced. Then there's a matter of Thurzo himself. He claimed that he caught Elizabeth Bathory in the act while arresting her, but failed to provide evidence for that for the next three days. Even then, the records show that whatever he presented wasn't the most convincing piece of proof of Bathory's guilt. Also, history has been relatively kind to Lady Bathory. The most outrageous crimes pinned on her, such as bathing in blood and using magic and rituals of innocent women to hurt her enemies, have proven to be the result of Ottoman propaganda against her and the Catholic religion, or simply a work of fiction written centuries after her passing. Then how come she was convicted so convincingly? That's where Thurzo's interest in King Matthias II's orders to investigate her come into the picture. Every crime needs a motive, right? So before we turn the spotlight to the others, let's find out why Elizabeth could have been such a bloodthirsty monster as history likes to paint her. The History of a Huntress To begin, Elizabeth was an inbred child. Her father married her own niece, which makes Elizabeth's mother her cousin. She was born in Transylvania nearly 100 years later after the reign of Vlad Tepes, the Impaler. Though she wasn't in any way related to Count Dracul, like Vlad, she was quite familiar with violence from a young age. Servants were routinely not treated well in this era. It is believed that since the age of four or five, she suffered from seizures, violent mood swings, as well as painful migraines. Some claim that she was either forcefully taken by a peasant at a young age or probably had a relationship with this person before her marriage that didn't end well. In either case, a bad experience. Privileged, violent mood swings and insensitive nurturing would have been the perfect recipe to create the psychotic monster that Elizabeth was portrayed as in her trial. Her husband, Ferenc Nadoshti, had witnessed Ottoman wicked practices in similar ways Vlad did, and many claimed that it affected him in the same way as well. The man shared his newfound interest in violence with his wife, who happened to have a natural knack for it. Also, another claim states that Elizabeth was too close to her Aunt Clara, who helped Elizabeth explore her tendencies. She also apparently introduced Elizabeth to witches and sorcerers. 
Does history offer us any alternate fact that she was a nice person? No. The overwhelming impression one gets from reading all the letters she sent or received is that she was a take-no-crap kind of lady. Her husband was off at war and gave her the keys to the castle in 1578 to manage an incredible amount of stuff in his absence. Even before he died in 1604, Elizabeth was responsible for thousands of servants, governing the local populace, and handling an amount of property second to none. Yes, the batteries were loaded, and that wealth only multiplied as her husband, the chief commander of the Hungarian army, led his troops successfully against the Ottomans and Hungarian Empire's ventures into the Balkan region. By 1610, Elizabeth Bathory was a force to be reckoned with, and even the king owed her money. Also, another Elizabeth cousin, Gabor, was gunning for the throne to the point that he ended up starting a civil war. Elizabeth's support could have been a deciding factor in favor of Gabor if she could financially support him. Additionally, Thurzo was a known schemer and opportunist who'd made a career out of backstabbing people, so a plot wouldn't be much of a surprise. There's evidence in correspondence with his wife that Thurzo was moving against Elizabeth over a year earlier than her arrest. He'd been in contact with the local church leaders who were whipping up the general populace against the Bathory's by telling them stories. Stories that were later used against Elizabeth Bathory as testimonies. But if Elizabeth was innocent, where did all those young women vanish to? That is certainly a historical mystery that we may never be able to solve. Tell us in the comments what you think about the Countess, victim or guilty. Thanks for watching Nutty History. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please share, like, and subscribe to watch more videos like this from us.